Nada. Do you hear me now? Uh-huh. I hear Wait a minute. You're on. You should be on. Hello, hello. Now yeah. it is. There you go. Okay. Yep. Thank you. I'm going to call this meeting to order with the Pledge of Allegiance. Should have stayed stand up. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, to the republic, stands one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Oh, Nick, you can pick the microphone, please. Oh, I got it. Uh, we have introductions. You can get, introduce yourself and then give it to Gina. Thank you. Hi, I'm Nick Carvis, the assistant principal and athletic director here at Deergo High School. Gina Clucci, director of nutrition. Earl Couture, um, math interventionist at the middle school and part of the, uh, the ad hoc committee. Danielle Williams, Dixfield resident, part of the ad hoc committee. Kristen Arsenault, library tech at the middle school and the high school and part of the ad hoc committee. Thank you and welcome. We do have some adjustments to the agenda. Could I have a motion, please? And second. I don't know. Hello, hello, hello. Sorry, the microphone's being weird. Okay, I won't move. Um. Oh, okay. Roll call. Larry. Yeah. Bruce. Yeah. Tim. Yes. Barbara. Yes. Deanna. Yes. Liz. Yes. Carl. Yes. Marianne. Yes. Okay, this is going to be interesting tonight. All right. Um, consideration of the minutes. The minutes of the May 9th, 2023 board meeting. Could I have a motion, please? And a second. Comments, questions, revisions. Seeing none. Roll call. Larry. Yes. Bruce. Yes. Tim. Yes. Deanna. Yes. Barbara. Yes. Liz. Yes. Carl. No voting. Marianne. Yes. <clears throat> All right. Minutes of the May 23rd, 2023 budget meeting. Could I have a motion, please? Sorry. And a second. Comments, questions, or revisions? Seeing none, roll call. Larry. Bruce. Yes. Tim. Yes. Deanna. Yes. Barbara. Yes. Liz. Yes. Carl. Not voting. Marianne. Yes. Public comments. This is the time the public can make a comment. Anybody online? Okay. Communications. Just want you to know that RSU 56 was notified by the Maine Department of Education Nutrition Department that they'll be performing an on-site summer food service program administrative review. Nutrition Director Gina Clucci will provide them with the necessary information and welcome them on site in July. That's all I have for communications. Quick question. When the, didn't they do the review or the summer one's different? Okay. Okie dokie. All right. Thank you. New business. I'm going to start with Earl. It's got you, the ad hoc committee report, and whoever's coming up. 
It's actually all of them. I just initially, I thought it was Earl. That's why it says Earl on the agenda, but it's actually Jason Long, Earl Couture, and the rest of the ad hoc committee, I believe. Sure, the mic's on so they can hear you, Deanna, Ken, and others. Yep. Okay. <laughs> All right. Good evening, board members. Today we'll be uh, discussing the ad hoc committee for the Civil Rights Committee board report for 2002-2003 school year. All right, the mission of the RSU 56 is to prepare our students to become purpose-filled, skilled members of the local and global communities. Did you want to do the administrative sure. statement? Um, just as in the past, we, we begin this presentation with the school board's mission for the district, as well as the administrative team statement when it comes to things that would fall under the umbrella of civil rights. This was presented to you last year, and it's composed primarily of your policies. The aim of the administrative team, following guidance from the board, is to provide a safe and equitable place in which all students can thrive and where students are encouraged to examine their world, their beliefs, and their role in society through multiple perspectives. While acquiring the necessary skills and perspectives needed for a meaningful life and career and developing positive attitudes toward themselves and genuine respect for others. With this in mind, controversial issues will be handled in an atmosphere of freedom and thoroughness following the policies, procedures, and main learning results as adopted by RSU 56. So whenever I'm in a pinch and I don't know what to do, that's the statement that we crafted together. Danielle? Sure. I don't even know what slide is next. Okay, so given all of those things, the purpose of our committee, the ad hoc committee, um, it states that the board hereby establishes an ad hoc civil rights committee with the charge of gathering data and reporting annually to the school board on relevant civil rights happenings, good or bad, in RSU 56. The superintendent or designee will provide an annual report to the RSU 56 Board of Directors describing the work of the committee and any relevant information or recommendations. And that is why we are here this evening to present that information and that report to you. We keep going or is it just sure. <clears throat> So our committee then, the, the composition of our committee, um, it, in, the statement is that the CRED will include in its membership at least one RSU 56 school board member, given that this is an ad hoc committee of the school board, as well as the RSU 56 advisors of civil rights teams, building administrators, and up to six community or school stakeholders recommended by the superintendent. The committee chair shall be chosen by the committee, but of course must be a member of the RSU 56 school board. Membership is determined annually following relevant policy or where no policy exists at the recommendation of the superintendent. Um, I won't read all of the names to you, but the names on this slide represent the people who um, have historically been members of the committee. Um, certainly, I think we all try to come and participate in as many meetings as we can, though um, whoever's present at a given meeting sometimes changes from one meeting to the next. This year, survey data. One of the major undertakings this year of the committee was to conduct a survey in a similar fashion to what was conducted two years ago. Um, and so we did that. Um, the questions were not written by me, they were written by the committee. Um, but 
I am going to kind of begin the process of presenting that survey to you now. Um, part of why we're conducting this survey is I think that when it comes to matters of civil rights, uh, there obviously are a lot of opinions out there and a lot going on, um, both in the state and in the nation. And it's important for, I feel, for you as a board and for us as a school community to try to gather information about us, our kids, our schools, us, what's going on here. Um, and so we conducted our survey. 55% of all students in grades 7 through 12 participated in that survey. Last time we did this two years ago it was 52%. Um, this time, 57% of staff members uh, district-wide participated. Last time, there was 76% of staff who participated. Um, we administered the survey uh, this past winter. Um, the committee decided to keep some questions from before, as well as to, based on how the last survey went, make some adjustments. So. Um, Oh, next slide, please, Jared. So um, unfortunately, I, the only reason why I gave you copies in color was for these slides, and then our machine was out of the toner that had those colors in it. So um, of the you know, plans of mice and men, if you take a look at the slide behind you, um, coloration will help to interpret that chart. Sorry, Barbara. So um, one of the questions that we asked was, um, do you hear inappropriate comments at school? And then we included you know, all the various categories that would be considered a civil rights violation. And what you can see is that 37% um, of the kids at the high school said they hear it regularly when staff are present, but 57% said they hear it regularly when staff are not present. You'll see a similar trend at the middle level where only 26% claim they hear this stuff regularly when staff are around, whereas 62% it's when the staff are not around. And if you average all that, it's pretty consistent with what, with what the staff claim they hear. Um, 29.6% 29, of staff will say that they do hear it regularly, but 70% will say that they never hear it or they very rarely hear it. So that's fairly consistent. Um, when you look on, you know, I mean, obviously you could flip those and talk about never or rarely, but the bottom line from this is the same thing that we learned two years ago, which is that the majority of the inappropriate comments are happening when staff are not around because the kids do indeed know that those are not appropriate things to say. Um, and understand that when it says 37% of students feel they hear it regularly, even when the staff is present, we didn't drill that down. That could be the same two kids. You know, that doesn't mean 37% of the students are making those sorts of comments, but that, that in that setting, they're hearing it. So students do know better more students report to hear inappropriate comments when the staff are not around. Similar as two, two, as two years ago. Next slide, please. Perception. We asked a series of perception questions, and we asked the students if they feel that they themselves value uh, multiple perspectives and diversity. And what I did there, we asked, it was a five-point um, linear scale with from very poor to one side to very good on the other side. And then I grouped where the majority was. And you can see that regardless if you were at the high school or middle school, um, the student's impression of themselves was poor to neutral. The staff's impression of the students was that they were neutral to good, which makes sense because most of the time when things are said, it's when staff are not around. So naturally, they would have a higher opinion on how things are going. Next slide, please. And then we asked, um, we asked, how do you feel the staff are when it comes to valuing multiple perspectives and diversity? And whether you were at the middle school or the high school, the clump of student answers were neutral to good. That's the student opinion of how staffs treat and value multiple perspectives and diversity. And perhaps not surprisingly, the staff felt they were good to very good. 
um, they gave themselves a higher mark there. Next slide, please. So it's interesting to note that most students do see an issue. Students generally agree that they as a group can do better at valuing others. Next slide, please. Okay, this is going to get pretty tricky because we asked some more sophisticated questions this time around in the survey. Um, we asked the students if they had heard a specific incident of harassment within the last two years, and then we asked that question in a way that broke that harassment down by type of civil rights violation, okay? And before you look at those long bars and go, oh my goodness, look how long they are, I need to point out that the x-axis only goes to 40%. So what you can see is that at the high school level, the most commonly reported type of harassment was um, gender or sexual identity based. And I was supposed to correct that language in the slide from our last meeting and I forgot to, darn it, I'm sorry. Um, that is the same at the middle school. And what's interesting is for the staff, what they are hearing most often is either a racist remark or other. And the way that we qualified other was something that was insulting based on socioeconomic status, ability or disability, um, or religion. And I can tell you from having analyzed this that what the staff report to hear the most are put downs are with language used to put down or disrespect someone with a disability. But that's the kind of thing that they are hearing the most. Next slide, please. So do you have any examples? So we asked not only those quantitative questions, we asked some qualitative questions. Next slide, please. And we tried to focus it within the last two years, because of course we gave a similar survey two years ago. Um, we ask students to provide examples if they wish to. I was not a mandatory question. They have experienced or witnessed racism. And for each of these slides, you'll see words that are in blue, words that are in red, and words that are in yellow. The blue words represent Deerigo High School. The red words represent Deerigo Middle School. And the yellow words represent the staff. The reason why we administered this survey grade seven and up is because we felt with this kind of a topic, we wanted to stick with the more mature students age-wise and follow the same type of protocol that the Maine Integrated Youth Health Survey does with the older students getting these sorts of questions. Um, I am not going to read these to you, they're upsetting, but I will point out the overall trend was that um, there was a lot of use of the N-word and there were a lot of dehumanizing remarks um, associating an individual with an animal that students reported to have happened. Superintendent Doyne, what do you want me to do? No, I changed the share link to to not just be within the RSU. He said, hoping that that's actually what he did. That's what I meant to do.
Well, victory. Um, I want to also add that, you know, we had lots and lots of comments. Um, why are these the comments that are up here? We used committee time at the meeting um, and we broke into teams and different teams reviewed all the comments and selected comments that they felt were representative of the scope and depth of what the generic comments were. Um, if a member of the board wants all comments, I'll provide that to you, but you get the sense of what's going on from the ones that were selected by the committee. The next slide um, has to do with harassment based on gender identity or sexual orientation. Um, once again, I, I think that a lot of the people characterize the things that were said as quote unquote jokes, um, but at the same time, they're not jokes. They're they're inappropriate. Um, and there are certain instances that um, are harsher than others. You can go ahead and click the slide. And then comments based on socioeconomic status, religion, or disability. Um, the R word seems to be being used. Um, there was a concern expressed about a staff member that um, is incredibly inappropriate and had not been brought to my attention. Um, but we're not trying to hide anything. Like the purpose of this ad hoc committee is to be transparent, right? Just put it out there, inform you to help you make decisions as a board. And then near the end of the survey, we ask students to and staff to feel free to just share anything else positive or negative. And I think that it's important for me to note that not every comment we had on the survey was negative, far from that. Um, in fact, more people left questions blank than had something bad to say. Um, and it was very much a mixed bag. Comments like, I think our school does a pretty good job and I love Deer Ago, all the way to things that are very, very discouraging. And that is not to say one opinion is right and the other opinion is wrong. It is to say that there are a variety of experiences happening for students and staff in our schools. That's the point. So what is being done about it? Uh, I'm going to hand the mic now more so over to the folks behind me because I wanted to present the data. Um, but I want to do the first slide because it involves administrative data. So if you could click it one more time. RSU 56 behavioral data, because as you can see, when it took, what are we doing about it? There are traditional consequences. Um, there are moments of confrontation. Um, and there are also you know, other creative things we're trying to do to promote the, the culture that we want to have in Dirigo. This year, between all three buildings, there were 1,281 major office referrals. And our, our district has roughly 700 and something kids. Um, across the district, there were a total of 30 civil rights violations that were recorded as majors. And I want to point out that up until this year, we had not used civil rights violation as one of the categories on the office referral forms. And that's important because we've been responsible for reporting civil rights violations federally for years and years and years. Um, but I think a lot of the time in the past, we would only report those major incidents that were front of mind, big suspension, big issue. Now we're collecting far more data, far more data. Um, and so while that number is discouraging to me, um, it's important that we're collecting it in a more detailed way. And, and that's encouraging to me. Um, it does represent, you know, almost two and a half percent of all the behavior that's happened. That's not nothing. Um, consequences for students depend on circumstances. It can be suspension. It can be detention. A lot of it has to do with the age, the intentionality or the ignorance behind the act. Um, whether or not it's something that's a first-time offense or not, um, and then if there's a willingness for restitution or not. Um, and I will also comment that of the 30 referrals this year, there were by 25 different students. 
So there are very few cases of a student repeatedly doing something like this. Very rare. Happens, but very rare. And obviously, if you repeatedly do something like this, the consequences escalate pretty rapidly on you. Uh, next slide, please. Okay. Um, would anyone like to talk about this is the staff confronting students? You can wing it. You're awesome. I haven't had a turn yet. Um, so we also asked a few questions. These are a pair. So the first one was asking students if they witnessed staff confronting students about harassment. And so like with the other ones, we've collected quotations that we feel are representative of the whole. So we have a mixed bag. So we have students who say, yes, they confront, staff confront students all the time. Um, and some students who feel like maybe confrontations aren't happening enough or that consequences aren't taken far enough. This is like touching my forehead. Okay. Um, yeah, so next slide. So then we also asked, because we were curious about this one, um, how often do students see students confronting other students about civil rights-based harassments? Um, and we saw a mix here too. So we've got a really great example from the high school where an underclassman used the N-word and an upperclassman confronted him. We love to see that. We love to hear about that. That should be happening every time. Um, and most of this is pretty encouraging because there are plenty of times where students are saying that students are self-policing, um, but we also have instances where they're saying rarely. Yeah, the next slide. Uh, so the next section is about our civil rights teams. Um, first, we have DES civil rights team. So this is the second year? About a year and a half. Year and a half, okay. So we started it a little bit at the in the middle of the, not this past year, but the year before. And then this was our first full year of DES civil rights team. So we've got a nice collage of photos of some things that they were up to this year. So they maintained a bulletin board by the office. They did the statewide day of welcome, which you'll hear about again later. Um, there were 10 regular members meeting two to three times per, mo per month. Earl, you mentioned earlier, two per month is minimum. Yes. <laughs> Students presented at an assembly during Black History Month. Read Across, Read Across America Day was also celebrated in a focus on how DES is one community, but we are all unique individuals. And this was the first full year pilot for grade three to five. So that's what we mentioned at the beginning. So the next slide will be Earl. <laughs> Thank you. All right, so this year in the TWK DMS civil rights team, uh, we celebrated the day of welcome. We created the sign and placed it up. We started the season with uh, 11 regular members in the fall, but through attrition, through sports and other extracurricular activities, we dwindled down. We met for twice a month. Uh, we did student-led conversations about the school climate and related issues. We actually brought, I brought in food. The the, uh, the members would pick an ethnic cuisine and I would purchase the food and bring it in. We'd all cook it together and we would talk about the different uh, cultures that they came from. And uh, we also watched the movie Hidden Figures and we had a pretty good discussion about that. And then at the high school, um, in keeping with the mission to increase the safety of school students by reducing bias motivated behaviors and harassment, they did the following. They maintained holidays and observances board. So they have, uh, you might have seen it on the way in, although you'd have to walk down the hallway and then come back to see it. But there is a bulletin board in the SEC hallway where they observe different holidays. Uh, they maintain a monthly focus board, which is on the stairwell, which students see. It's a very like high visibility area. Uh, they participated in the statewide day of welcome, which included handing out stickers, putting posters around the school, and writing welcoming messages. That's just a statement of everyone is welcome here. That's what all three schools did. Students organized participation in awareness events, and they met weekly during activity period and met weekly after school and increase student participation to five up from two the year prior. So now we've got five. And it sounds like we've got some coming from the middle school too, so. Yes, you do.
Okay. So some outcomes that the ad hoc committee has been a part of thus far include um, a district team training. I already forgot what that acronym stands for, I'm sorry. Maine School Management Association. <laughs> there was also an admin team training by, a former D by former DHS students. As we've already discussed, the pilot civil rights team at the elementary school, increased activity at the civil rights teams from grades six to 12, as well as regular collection and presentation of local data, this being the second time that we presented that type of data to the board. Um, and you know, in addition, the committee maintains minutes um, under the Freedom of Information Act as requested. So we are doing things. We are collecting data and being transparent. Um, and we know that we need to do better. And I would actually say not only do we need to do better, I think we can do better. I think we're starting to move in a direction um, to be able to do better. And to me, that's the bottom line of the presentation I gave you today. Uh, if you'd please hit the next slide. Part of our charge is to present to you our efforts, as well as any information that we have gathered. And then finally, our recommendations. This is the unanimous vote of all the people who attended the meetings um, for this ad hoc committee. And keep in mind, um, not everybody, you know, loves surrendering time to yet another committee. Um, so this, the, the, they voted this way as a form of self-sacrifice um, because they see uh, importance in it. Uh, we recommend that you continue to renew the ad hoc committee. Uh, we would like to operate for another year so that we can continue to collect local information and data to supply you. The purpose of this committee is not to tell you what to do, and it's not to be the, like, the source of initiative behind all things in the buildings. Um, but when we talk about civil rights violations and issues in America today, it is very easy to get caught up in a broader debate and a broader discussion. We want to talk about dear ago. We want information about our students to help inform our my decisions as an administrator, your decisions as a school board member. Keeping that approach local, I think, is a lot more viable when you take the time and do the work to collect local data to inform those discussions. We are excited to see all three civil rights positions as part of uh, the budget up for a vote today. Uh, we're hopeful that they pass and we will obviously continue our annual presentations to you no matter if it, no matter what it looks like because the point is to be transparent and give you the information that you need. And I need, you could click the button uh there's no there's no slide that says questions and go cougars i don't think i've ever made a presentation without a slide that says questions and go cougars holy moly um happy to take any questions and uh and again it is our hope that i don't know if it's in the minutes as an action um okay awesome thank you pam uh, i have a question it says on one of the slides about um staff members 57 percent as it was 76 percent a year ago two years ago so it's down the number of staff members who participated in the survey this year is substantially fewer than the number of staff who participated two years ago yes what's your thoughts on that why did that happen mm -hmm. um any conjecture anything you can think of or is anything i Last time we administered the survey, it was recommended that we spend workshop time doing it, and it wasn't this time. So I think it's it was more of a, we gave time for it last time, and this time we didn't. And so people, you know, it gets lost in the email inbox sometimes. I guess that makes sense, but still, it's kind of distressing. I think that not everybody, or at least 75% would be involved in it when I think it's important to find yeah. out where all the staff fall and what they think and their role in this is very important. It's just as important as what these kids are doing, maybe more so. So that's that was just my question. I agree. I was I was very discouraged with the turnout. Um, it was well publicized, sent multiple times. There was a month to do it. Um, 
in order to make it a valid survey of this type, it has to be anonymous. I can't have a list and go chase down people. Hey, what'd you, you know, um, we've got to think of a way to get the participation back up to a better number next time around without a doubt. I agree. I believe two years ago, I even took that. It was on our emails, correct? I didn't see it this year on mine. I don't know if it's something I slipped. I usually do my own work. But... I don't recall us giving board members the opportunity I, last time around. Uh, there was a, when, when there was was a community a, one. That okay, may be what you're thinking of. Yeah. Yep. But it was so, very similar. Same thing, I believe. Yeah. Similar topic, um, different design. So a couple of years ago, there was a community group that came to the board after having done their own survey through Facebook and email. And, and then many members of that, they wrote a letter to you that was very detailed and they spoke at a number of meetings. And then some of those folks um, came to the event that we hosted to see who would like to be part of the ad hoc committee. And they did join the ad hoc committee. Um, some of those folks have since moved away. Um, and so the first time we presented, because it was the desire of the committee, we also presented that community survey but we didn't attempt a community survey. And that was that's pretty why. thorough. Well, well, I get you right there. What's the SWIS form? SWIS stands for school-wide information systems. Um, it's, it's the office referral form. Thank you. Sorry. I guess the, the part I really intrigued me was that the statement where you put that students do know better. Um, and you reported that more students report to hear inappropriate uh, comments when the stu staff are not around. So it's basically telling us that we're slowly getting them more educated to understand what is inappropriate. We haven't though crested the top of them knowing that they still can't do it. So we're gaining, but we're not there yet. And it's a good thing that we're moving forward. The question is, is when will we get there? Will we get there? Um. I, I don't know how to answer your your question. I appreciate the optimism with which you looked at the data. Um, I t the way that I interpret that is that we as a system are doing the job the community would expect us to do. However, there are um, there are other forces and factors which also influence young people and and the their vocabulary and you know there's there's so much in the media and as students you know increasingly develop their social norms through a screen instead of a conversation i'm going to get on my soapbox i think that plays a role because i think that you know i look at a seventh grader who would never say to my face the types of things i've seen them say online and i think eventually some of those sort of inappropriate extreme things that can happen online can become just part of the way that they talk when the grownups aren't around. But I don't know. I just know that I think that, yes, are we being intentional about addressing these things? Yes. Um, are we getting better at addressing these things? I also feel like we are. Um, but I also, I don't know what it will take um, to crest that hill, as you said. Other than I think the civil rights teams are really important because if you can get a meaningful number of students in the school who in the hallways say, hey, cut that out, and a teacher doesn't have to be the one to say it, that's when you start creating norms of behavior in the building that are consistent with what our values are as a district. We need that we need some kids to feel empowered to step up. They do know better, but they need to be encouraged to stand up when inappropriate things are happening. I, since you want us to vote, number one, I look at the, the makeup. And Larry goes, I go not all the time. Pam goes, okay, no, she doesn't have to because you're there. There's like five core people and it's the board committee. Barbara, we can't hear you. Can't hear me? 
now's a little bit better. All right. It's the microphone. Can you hear me now? Yeah, it's a little bit better. <laughs> this one. I don't. How's that? No. Nope. Perfect. Yeah, yep. <laughs> I can hear that one. All right. So you guys, I, you know, because it is a board committee. I'm not forgetting. So we have me and Larry and the chair because she, she resigned. And so there's not really a chair. So for it to be, the board has to have involvement, consistent involvement. And that means this board, you know, we may have, we'll have new board members, different ones coming in, coming out by July, but it has to be because to me, that's, it's under the, sorry, the board realm. That's my one question. My other question is, you talk about the civil rights, the the elementary starting, Earl had what? Well, depending on sports. Yeah, but I, I the, raised from 11 to five. Yeah, and I can understand that. And the high school had three or five, five this year from three. So do you feel it's improving enough that, okay. And what is the expectations? Yes, it's great to be visible with, and I know that's the curriculum the state gives, to put out posters, to put out welcoming notes. And you seem to, Earl, do a little bit more trying to involve the culture and things because you have the time. I, But, you know, and so I'd like to see, is it only our goal for the civil rights to do what the state tells us to do, you know, the curriculum, or are we going to try to do more or whatever the kids feel like? You know what I mean? With guidance. That's my one question first with that one. I And it's not you, Jason, because it's the board. What is the expectations? This, sure. Okay. Oh, you poor man. <laughs> okay. Uh, when I first started, I read through all the stuff that they gave me with the Civil Rights Team Project. And ultimately, you don't have to follow, and it's going to sound crazy, you don't have to follow everything that they say. There are rules, like we don't get political, we don't endorse candidates, we don't, there's things we don't do, but the world is open to what you can do. And last year we had, I believe, one or maybe two students that were all year in our civil rights team, and this year we were up to 11 and down to five, okay? Okay. Um, if you give the students a place to come and talk about what's going on, they will use it. I mean, I coached them with tacos one day, you know, Hey, we're having tacos. I had kids show up that weren't part of the group, you know, but they talk. Um, it's mainly just getting out there and making, making sure that students that might be hearing things when there's no teacher around, they have a place to come and talk about it. it it's not, hidden away it's you know what i'm saying yeah. it's it just gives them a place to, to voice what they need yeah. to voice it that at least in my opinion yeah but and we are absolutely so, not restricted by what they post out in their agenda and i think that's real vital to know for all of us because we kind of know that we didn't know but the way you presented gave us that's what we want to hear okay um <clears throat> um so the attendance, because you guys that I know which ones went were awesome. They went diligently. You know, they're really focused. I think the data is important, at least to me. I don't know how the whole board feels. Um, <clears throat> I just see we get the data and we look at it. And is it a, what do we do with the data to see where we're going or to see if we're how to read it? You know, we get the data. What do we do with it? Um, well, we can use the civil rights teams with the data, depending on what the board wants or what the administration can plan. Uh, we can do presentations that address certain issues that we're seeing. Um, it just it kind of gives us a back door into what the you know, into what they're doing. 
Uh, but yeah, we can make posters. We can talk to people. We can do presentations. We can bring in guests. <clears throat> it's just a, it's a really good asset that we can use as a school system to just one more way to confront certain things. Because I, when I look at the slideshow, I do think when they do in front of teachers, it is addressed because I know just like any other discipline, when something happens, I mean, students may not see it, other staff may not see it, but I do believe if something majors happen, I know admin are going to do their job. It's just getting it, like Bruce said, when they're not there, like any normal child, the kid, if if an adult's not there, we'll see what we can get away with. Mm -hmm. But this is a little different because it hurts people. Well, it can hurt other things can hurt, but so um I think that was my questions. Any Larry? I just want to revisit a statement you just made. You said they come to this civil rights group and talk. Yes. Does that mean that they feel comfortable there? They feel safe that yeah. they can talk? Yeah. I mean, it, as part of my in, my original thing, you know, when I first introduced, introduced everybody when we were a big group, I told them they need to bring anybody they want to, anybody they can, and come and talk. And they, I mean, the, the, the comment was brought up, well, what about so-and-so? No names. Uh, because they don't agree with what the civil rights team stands for. And I was like, yes, because you can't change somebody's mind by yelling at them. You bring them in, you talk. I mean, my my members always felt comfortable to talk. So there is a confidential. Absolutely. Okay, thank you. Any other questions? <clears throat> Jace, do you want to talk? Your concern regarding board participation, I share it. I feel like the effectiveness of the time and energy that goes into this presentation that you saw, um, it would be a more valuable thing for the district if more members of the board were willing to join. The committee meets four times a year. Um, I, I keep good notes. The, the drive I shared with you has every little detail of everything we've ever done. Um, and for me, I'm a process guy. I'm a government nerd. And I, I always look around my state and I get worried about districts that tear each other apart over controversial issues. And I think that it's a good insurance policy to have a committee that's doing this leadership that answers to the Freedom of Information Act. You know, because it is a board committee, um, there's a greater degree of transparency, which I don't think we hide anything around here. But like it kind of holds my feet to the fire to make sure my notes are real good, you know, um, and I just I think that's a good way to do business. And so um, instead of being discouraged by relatively low board participation, to me, it's a it's a reason to to encourage more of you to participate on the committee, because I think that we'll be well served in the long run to to have data about us that we talk about not um you know get swept up in whatever is going on somewhere else like let's 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 keep our eyes on our mission which is the the kiddos in canton peru carthage and dixfield thank you any other questions because the next thing is a motion to continue the civil rights ad hoc committee for the 2023-24 year, do I have a motion and a second? Uh, my comment is, and this isn't just this committee, I do know a lot of, thank God I don't work anymore, uh, the board members work and it's very difficult to come to a, what time do we usually have them? 5.30. 5.30. So if there, you know, if you're interested, you know, because we're going to need a chair of this. Um, Barbara Chow can only chair so many. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, it's it it's very valid. And, you know, it's not our only committee that's a little uh, short. And so I kind of, <laughs> it's not. So um, just remember that. All right. That was any other comments? 
Seeing none, roll call. Larry. Bruce. Yes. Tim. Yes. Deanna. Yes. Barbara. Yes. Liz. Yes. Carl. Yes. Marianne. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> Thank you, Jerry. Thank you, sir. In your packet, we have a list of board meeting dates. There, none in July. And um, this beginning in August. So could I get a motion to approve the board meeting dates? And a second. Comments or questions? Seeing none, roll call. Before I do roll call, I'll have one comment. We do have one left for this year, June 27th. So don't forget that one because we have to, uh, whatever we do with the votes from tonight, ratify them, vote, vote on whatever. Sorry, Larry, Bruce, yes. Tim, yes. Deanna. Yes. Bob? Yes. Liz? Yes. Carl? Yes. Marianne? Yes. Before we start, all right. Anybody because Bruce hire not hiring, voting in. Canton hasn't done, no, Canton doesn't have one, do they this year? Yeah. Natalie. Okay. Okay. So when can people start? Do they start? So they start July 1st. So okay. this board has June 27th as a board meeting still. They okay. they would be sworn in and they would start after July 1st into the next sure fiscal year. Everybody knows that. Mm -hmm. All right. So we have one the 27th of June. Is that last one on a Wednesday? No, it should no, be. No, if I said that, if maybe I said it wrong. <clears throat> the 20 27th. Oh, no, this no. one I, I sent the next year. I sent out a corrected one. Oh, okay. Because it was inadvertently listed for a Wednesday, but it's the June 25th is a Tuesday. Okay. All right. So it should be 25. Yes, I sent out a corrected one with the amended agenda okay. afterwards. All right. Not that I looked that far ahead. Um, all right. Yeah, I found them. They're pretty little numbers. Yeah. All right. Uh, first reading of ADAA school system commitment to standards for ethical and responsible behavior. Could I have a motion, please? And the second? Second. Uh, this is a required policy. Um, when we had gotten that lovely thing from the insurance, if we have all the required policies, we get a discount, I guess. Um, we did not have this one because it used to be we have, which we still have, student code of conduct, which pretty much covered this, but they like a lot of wordy reading. So... So my version, they have it under the A. So any questions on this? It was MSMA sample. Seeing none, roll call. Larry, Bruce, yes. Tim, yes. Deanna. Yes. Barb. Yes. Liz. Yes. Carl. Yes. Marianne. Yes. Okay. First reading of EE. -E. A-E-A-A-R, Drug and Alcohol Testing of School Bus Drivers Administrative Procedures. Could I have a motion, please? And a second? Second. Um, we followed the law. It is required to have this. So we did review it. And basically, you follow the law. And this is what we've been doing. But they like it to be because a lot of times... Procedures aren't in policy, but the state would like this one in policy. Any? 
it is updated. Whenever I do, um, whenever we do a revision, I always go to MSMA's um, sample database. I look at what they've got and it's, and then I actually have on my computer an MSMA folder with all the samples I've had before. So I compare and I know that it's the recent. Any other questions? Uh, roll call, Larry, Bruce, yes. Tim, yes. Deanna. Why? Yes. Why? Barb, yes. Liz, yes. Carl, yes. Marianne, yes. Um, first reading of policy IHBAL, grievance procedure for persons with disabilities. Could I have a motion, please? And second? Second. And this is a MSMA required policy, which we did follow law, but Sometimes they like to put law in and it is the latest. Um, yeah, it's, um, it's not new, but it's new for us. This one we have not had in. We did not have in the procedure. The three of them are all new for us because them are the ones. You should see my folder, which I've had for many years, old policy, new policies, revision policies, RSU 10 policies from a go. 21 is in a book. Any other questions or comments? <laughs> See it done. Roll call. Larry, Bruce. Yes. Tim. Yes. Deanna. Yes. Barb. Yes. Liz. Yes. Carl. Yes. Marianne. Yes. Thank you. Um, Brian's not here. You got any Region 9 updates? So. Region 9 met this past Wednesday, June 7th. Um, we more or less, uh, it wasn't a real long meeting. There wasn't very many committee reports that they had. Um, there's a, one of the places, a place, uh, a group called Harriman, who's spearheading to look over for one of our projects that we got the grant money for, for the welding lab. So they're in the process of trying to figure out how that facility will be built, will it be added on, will it be a standalone? So everything is kind of up in the air. We're just more or less they're going around with different thoughts and ideas because once they figure out where one part goes, it will give them better insight to where the second grant for the culinary arts part would go. Um, then they talked about some of the directors went to the Foster Tech Forestry event. Um, we've had quite a few people that have been certified in different uh, things that throughout some of the programs. We had five culinary arts students took the serve safe manager exam. Um, two students successfully passed the rigorous exam. Uh, they had some other, some other ones that uh, going for the CNA licenses. Um, we had 100% that passed and are all registered CNAs. Uh, we also had uh, last Tuesday was our adult education graduation. Um, I had planned to attend it, but I was under the weather, so I didn't want to give anyone my cold, so I did not attend it, but they had a good little turnout for people graduating. Um, uh, during the meeting, also in our new business, there was just a lot of uh, updates for, for salaries that were up very upgraded for people for the each year. As with anything, there's always a percentage increase that each one got that got approved and, and uh, set forth before the uh, directors. And that's pretty well summed it up. Any questions for Bruce? All right, superintendents. So just in case you didn't know, tomorrow is the last day of the 2022-23 school year. There will not be a late arrival because it will be early dismissal. Early dismissal starts at 1130 for students. All RSU 56 staff will convene in here, the SCC at 1230 for a luncheon, a tribute to our retiring staff and prizes will be drawn. Board members are welcome to attend. And if you still wish to donate a raffle item, please feel free to do so. You can get it to me early tomorrow morning or sometime before noon. Graduation events were successful last week. We honored all 52 of our seniors because each of them were eligible to graduate, which was really nice. And I did want to thank Bruce and Barbara for attending the graduation events as they were available. It's always nice to see board members attend. 
I am going to have Gina and Nick give reports tonight, but I'll come back to them and I'll just whip through my stipend report outs. We have co-drama club advisors next year, Jim Hamelain and, and Abby Johnson. We have co, I don't know if it's co when there's three, but co-advisors for the civil rights at the middle school, Danielle Williams, who is here tonight, Michelle Arujo and Ella Kutcher are all going to work on that together. We have Teresa Sear, who will be doing the student council. Elaine Finnegan will be doing debate at the middle school. And Katie Houghton will be the eighth grade class advisor. And I will invite Gina up for her nutrition report. And then after that will be Nick Carvis for athletic director report. Okay, where am I finding right there? It is on? Okay, okay. Are you trying to say I'm short? <laughs> I am short. <laughs> okay, good evening. So uh, I did a quick presentation. Okay, and he's bringing it up. Well, maybe. Good time I move it to left. Good. Okay. Okay, so the, these numbers are as of yesterday, because no, today's numbers were not moved over when I did this. So um, 54,295 breakfasts served this year so far, and 76,082 lunches. And on the side, I put how many days, because if you notice, there's big variations in some of those numbers, and it's just showing you that the differences in the amount of days in a in a month really make a difference of what our, our reimbursement is. Because you see like March had 22 days and you have 9,000 lunches that was served on that month. And that converts, if you go to the next page, Jared, that converts, that tells you about how much money we got. So 144,967.65 for breakfasts so far, and 337,043.26 for lunch. That is not our 100% of our money because we also have the um, CCFP. If you, a lot of times there are acronyms, acronyms in this uh, program, and that stands for Child and Adult Care Food Program, which is open to not just schools, it's open to even to daycares, but that's what we choose to do here because we are um, considered severe need, especially the middle school. Um, so that is our after school program. That's what we use. We give them what we call a super snack. So it's it's not quite a like a supper, but it's a little more than just a snack because it gives us a higher reimbursement. Um, we will be bringing that to the middle school next year, which I'll talk about later um, the local food funds for if we spend money on like local fruit veggies uh, we did meat we bought some meat from conants this year did uh, beef stew and shaved steak sandwiches which the kids really did like for every three dollars we spend we get a dollar back so each month I can put in a claim for that so it's we've we've spent the money but we are getting money back to kind of encourage us to do more local food. Um, we have already received the announcement that we are eligible for fruit and veggie grant next year for the elementary and the middle school. That is only open to the, these two schools. It's not open to the high school. That's why they're never put into this. It's not even open to the, that age. Um, the commodity monies, last year we received like 45,000. Next year, it's going to be close to the 25,855. The reason we got so everybody got a lot more last year because it was considered um, COVID. We were still under the pandemic. So that for, I think most of you have been here before when I've explained it, we receive our um, funds and we can choose where we put it because we can do brown box, which would be like meat, cheeses, vegetables, frozen items, or like you have canned fruits and DOD fresh, which we used quite a bit this year and NOI. So if we purchase like a pre-made pizza or, or French toast sticks or something like on that idea, we get a discount, a small discount off from that item. I'm not even keep, keeping up on mine and over here because I had some notes. Um, Jared, if you want to go ahead. 
So new menus, we have done a lot of homemade pizza crust at the middle school, uh, meatballs. She's done bread, which I do have a picture later on, so you'll see it. They've made homemade bread this year. Um, the middle school and high school, we've done theme days. So Mondays would be like, well, Tuesdays, I know right off the top of my head was soup and sandwich day. It'd be a homemade soup and a sandwich to go with it. There was um, different themes, like they might do an Italian day, you know, Italian pasta or something like that. There was different Mexican, American themed days. Uh, beef stew, we did the local beef. We did get the fish from the Gulf of Maine. Kids were not crazy about it. <laughs> well, because some of it was like monkfish. And if you look up a monkfish, you're not going to want to eat it. <laughs> they're, they're ugly. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that is an ugly fish. So that's the homemade bread. So they've made quite a bit of the homemade bread this year. And it was really a really nice bread. So um, yeah, the pizza crust, they've done all homemade pizza crust. We have had um, the main grains come in and they were trying to sell us the pizza crust, but our kids have really liked that homemade. And we, we've we had a lot of flour, so we were trying to use it up. Um, the homemade calzones, just put in a couple of the pictures. You want to go on more, Jared? Um, and what is on its way, Jared, if you want to? So the freezer, I couldn't get a good picture of the, the freezer where it stands now. That is when, when it was being put in. And I did have a picture of it filled today, but I could not upload it. It would not go for me, so I don't know why. But that right now is, that has a lot of stuff in it right now. Um, we actually, at the end of the school year, we were able to buy um, quite a few items for like $8 a case. So we took advantage. So we'll start next year with a lot of commodities in stock. And that is the picture of the vending machine that's going to the middle school. So we will be able to do that after school snack, what I, was talking about earlier. We will have snack in there. We can put breakfast so that the kids, if they're late and they want to come down for a breakfast or after the bell, they can just go to that machine, punch in their, their student ID number that associates to them. No, it's going to come right off. Yep. It will come off from their accounts. Um, just saying, I'm a little bit uh, perturbed I know. that uh, this is going to the middle school. I know. <laughs> I know. We'll be working on yours. We do have the one out here, but it's an older version. And well, I should say, as the superintendent, I'm very pleased that it's in the district <laughs> okay. as the high school principal. Hmm. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So they will just punch in their numbers and so they can actually get a reimbursable breakfast or after school snack because we don't have people there after school. So we could fill that. And if they, they have a lot of programs at the middle school, so they could get their snack there. So kind of on the idea of what we're doing at the elementary over there, but they will get it from the machine instead. And we can put uh, snacks in there too. So we'll have like a row of the after, I mean, regular a la carte snacks. And I can shut off different rows at different times of the day so they can only access like the breakfast at a certain time or the after school snack at a certain time. It's all tech. Each are going to have a number. I mean, so, so say someone has number 25. Could they go there after school, they get a snack, and then later on they want to have another snack, and it only is going to limit them of what they can yeah. do. Yeah, so okay. to be reimbursed, yeah. they would have to pay okay. or have money on their account, and it would charge their account. Okay, thank yeah. you. And we will put, um, it'll be their lunch ID number, and their birthday, so that I can't figure out that your number is 2525. I will need to know your birthday too. So, <laughs> yeah. Oh, just a quick, so they yep. get one free one each time. Yep. So everybody gets a free free breakfast and they can get a free after school snack. After school snack. Yeah, after so after it school. will be open to the sports kids as well, as long as we have a um, enrichment program, even though enrich sports are enrichment they don't consider it enrichment they will have to have like a homework helper um, program going craft club anything on that idea will also let us piggyback the sports kids so so they will be able to do it too um, um, before you move on just yep. a quick question and I can probably know the answer because of 
staff over here? Do you foresee having it here where there's a good crew of kids? For the after school? No, for either one high school having that here. Another yes. vending machine. That vending machine was paid for by a grant. And okay. the, yeah. So you have the, to write a lovely grant again. Yeah. Okay. Yes. And it was paid for with a breakfast and after school grant. And we really didn't have the, one of the, one of the requirements to do that, uh, the after school is someone's going to have to take attendance because I need to actually put in attendance each month. And, and that's where we were running into problems when we didn't run it here because we were putting it in the cooler, but we weren't getting the attendance. And so it was a little bit messy on that end. Um, if you want to go to the next slide, we did have the uh, veterans luncheon this year, which the Alt Ed served. The nutrition program prepared it. Alt Ed served it, and then uh, Jason had talked about it before when he had the people talking. You mean that they discussed it, being a veteran and stuff like that? Um, it really went over well, so we're hoping to do it again next year. And it was paid for by the, um, I think it was the boosters for the middle school. So. You know, it was completely paid for. And I did not put this next title on, I mean, the next slide, but we are being audited. <laughs> uh, and I did look it up. It was 2021, so two years ago. So, yes, I thought it's like, I just got done. But we had all of them. We did the summer, and then each program was audited. So that was only two years ago. I don't know if it was because it was not an in-house. They didn't come in. So I think that's part of why we're doing it. Um, we also have been chosen for a week-long culinary institute training that will take place in uh, August. It's for three people. I asked for three people, and we um, we will get a little financial help for like because I the girls I had asked about if they'd possibly want to go because one would be Ellen, where she cooks a lot of the meals. Um, they didn't really want to stay in a hotel because we could ask for a hotel but instead we asked for the transportation costs so and i think that is all i have on there is there any questions any questions bruce so clarify it for me next year what is, is we've been been having free breakfasts and free lunches what's the status for next year still supposed to be the same so it's, holding its own yep it's still staying the same yep okay. so when i look at our reimbursement on your end you wouldn't see the difference but on my end as the kids come through when they punch the number in they we get reimbursed at the full so the full pay for the free is a certain rate and then the reduced is a certain rate and the state puts in the difference and then the the full pay kids the state pays that whole so it's also, just broken down into little so we're also going to try to encourage families to fill out the paperwork yes we're going to be sending that home yep okay. yeah i have them ready to go out and we can send we have to wait till after july for us okay but yes we will be asking for applications again this year can we send out a second mailing of them if we don't get enough of them by the first of the year i mean the first of it needs to be year. october 1st right i think it's october yeah, school starts. Yeah, because it is vital to our. Yes, we did receive um, a lot back last year, but um, quite a few people that had previously qualified didn't qualify, and no, we actually got their their application, but they didn't qualify anymore. Hmm. So I don't know if they just got a little bit of a raise, but but there's always. I mean, but yes, we will be asking for applications. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I mean, and, I, just, and I know state, a lot of times we send them out, but sometimes it's like they yeah. don't send it in. So yeah, and that's we, could... we we can't require them to send no, them in. No, it's not. So that's I'm where just thinking if we if we did it once right after the yeah. when you first time you can. The elementary the passes them out the first day with all of their okay their packet. The middle school sends them home with the so ahead of time. It, hit them twice. Off yeah, free yeah they, each, they each school them passes back. them out, so <laughs> we hope to get at least one back from a family. And your training you talked about for the three girls, you said transportation. Where is that being held? Westbrook. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Westbrook. So 
Um, any plans for new equipment or anything new for next year? Or we had talked about the dishwasher, but uh, they came and and put the parts in, and they said it was no, good. It works Go for, good. Yeah, for okay. So fingers crossed. Right now, everything okay. seems good. Yep. Thank you, Gina. Anybody else? No. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Thank, thank you. you. All right, Mr. Nick. Oh, Carl has a question for Gina. Uh, statement in general. When we, find, when we pass those packets out with like emergency contact and we can't like withhold those devices till the parents send that in or I don't think so put them all as a package no there's just no way of doing that we put them out as a package we ask for them all to come back but we cannot withhold anything for no. the it's, no I think the, all the student if the parent doesn't the only way we re could require them is the alternate aid the you know, basically, do you make between this and this? I mean, you could require them to do that one. Do I dare ask why we can't require it? State, it's federal. Yes. It's but we, have, <laughs> so they, we can have an incentive. Other schools have done that, but they say it doesn't work. Does it work? No, no. I've asked lots of superintendents and mm -hmm. principals, because I go lot, to lots of those meetings, about how they get them back. And it's pretty much everybody struggles with getting them back i think so. we've actually done better than a lot of places because free ice cream yeah yeah no yeah we we can't require them because it's it's a law but but we could require them if we change the the other form that could be required but we got a gift certificate to the store over there It'd probably save us money in the long run yeah Thank you, Gina. All right, Nick, you're the athletic director tonight, right? Yes. Okie doke. This might be the first speech that I do without crying. So please be careful, especially in the past week. Um, I'm just going to be reporting on athletics. Um, the spring season came and gone as fast as it possibly could this year. Uh, which is a good and bad thing just because the seniors are done uh, and it was um, it was tough to see them uh, go across the stage last week for sure. So the high school spring total events, we had 72 with one canceled event. Uh, and this is also including like I've rescheduled. I didn't want to put how many I rescheduled within there. Uh, the middle school had a total of 40 events with only three canceled. We had more JV games this year for both softball and baseball at the high school level, but obviously we're hoping to get more for next year uh, and possibly move to a Saturday schedule where it's a round robin uh, just because there was a lot of transportation issues across the MVC. Uh, the middle school, it was tougher to get JV games because we were like one of four teams that have that had a solidified JV team. Uh, but we're going to be trying to figure out if there's a better plan that we can do next year so that we can get the uh, athletes as much time as possible on the fields and get them involved as much as possible. Uh, overall, we had some pretty great seasons the, at the high school level. Both softball and baseball were within the playoffs. Uh, boys and girls tennis uh, had a really good season as well. We are pretty young within girls and boys tennis uh, within those teams. And Luckily, it felt very rushed this year, and being on the uh, tennis committee for the MPA, uh, we are looking possibly to extend it a little bit longer so that it doesn't feel like we have five matches within six days, uh, which did happen this year because, actually, I think it was four matches in five days uh, just because of all the weather. We wanted to get as many matches as we could in, and that nasty storm that lasted days upon days upon days just kept pushing us back farther and farther um, track and field also had a really good season i do want to note that bodie gray went on to states and he has made the deer go discus record uh throwing a 130 foot and two inch discus which was pretty incredible so um yeah it was outstanding uh the middle school, both softball and baseball were in the playoffs and baseball actually played in the championship game against Monmouth uh, yesterday before our spring banquet, which we all rushed back for um, as well. 
they did extremely well uh, during the course of the game. Uh, they did not come up winning that game, but it was remarkable. Both teams did a really good job, and it was one of the best middle school baseball games I've ever witnessed. So they did a really good job. Uh, track and field also had uh, plenty, like they had an insane amount of participants this year. Uh, we averaged around, I would say, 34 to 36 athletes participating at the middle school level uh, during the course of the season. And they also went to the championship meet uh, and had a really good outcome like during the course of the entire event. So it was a it was a great season for both the high school and middle school teams. Uh, it was nice to see everybody out there, except for that one week of rain where pretty much nobody was out there. And we were in the gym and uh, I was having a couple nightmares from winter season, but I got past it and we uh, definitely were still able to make the best of it. Uh, we are looking forward to next fall uh, where we will be having football, field hockey, cross country, uh, soccer will be eight person on both boys and girls and golf uh, at the high school level. The middle school level is going to be field hockey, soccer, boys and girls uh, and cross country. And I'm going to be working with the coaching staff during the course of the summer just to make sure that our athletes uh, are able to take advantage of multi-sports uh because i know that there is a lot of time and dedication that they put into that um and just working with the coaches throughout the course of summer getting ready for the fall um the fifth graders at the middle school level sorry i kind of jumped a note i just wanted to say that it was it went extremely well uh we had increased participation even through the grades six through eight. Uh, we were able to adjust during the course of the season with our amount of coaching staff, uh, even with the additional fifth graders that we had coming in. I think that it ran pretty smoothly. Um, the coaches, I feel like, felt supported. I hope I'm not just talking for them, but we made sure that we adapted and they had everything that they possibly uh, could need. And I think that next year, we are going to be moving forward with it still because uh, I think that it is providing more opportunities for our fifth graders to be able to participate and, you know, get involved with as much as they possibly can uh, to see what they are going to be interested in in the future. So that's my recap so far before I jump into my next topic. Does anybody have any questions or concerns? Go ahead, Bruce. Uh, uh did I miss it? Is middle school having football? Middle school does not have football through the school. That's through Dixfield Rock. Okay. All right. Thank you. Yep. And I'll just comment. Um, last year when Scott Blaisdell, God love him, grandparent, says, I need the concessions. I said, what do you need money for? Well, I bought the uniforms. I go, excuse me, this is a Dixfield Rec team. Well, because there was no Dixfield Rec committee they pretty much but now it's very organized uh budget is out i mean there's a lot of things that scott helped other coaches budget for so it is very very organized now and it won't yeah. be and that's awesome because i felt awful like <laughs> go what do you mean um you know that these you know it was a mismatch Thank God we have community members that step up and really did that because that would it was a mess. Yeah. And even though I don't have any jurisdiction over it, Scott and I have been talking during the course of the year about any Dixfield rec programs and anything that I, you know, come across that I believe are Dixfield rec uniforms or anything within our schools, because then right before COVID, I think some stuff was stored. Uh, so we've been able to work through that and communicate during the course of the seasons. And yep. Nick did help with the budget too. He showed him mm. how to do a budget. <laughs> yeah. That's all you needed to do. Yep. Okay. The next topic that I'm going to bring up, uh, I know that it was brought up a couple of years ago and I just want to um, revisit it because when there are opportunities for any type of student athletes or students in general, I just want to make sure that I'm advocating for them. Uh, and that would be for esports. Uh, so I just wanted to give a couple facts from this fall of 2022 regarding esports. Uh, so the state of or the MPA works with play 
VS, uh, which is a nationwide program that basically uh, gives scholarships uh, to colleges that have esports as one of their athletic programs. Uh, 45% of esport athletes at the high school level said that esports was their first school sponsored activity. Um, so I know that this could be an overlap with our current student athletes that we have here at Deergo High School, uh, but I think that this will also include others that aren't necessarily participating within any type of extracurricular events, uh, which is why I believe that it would be a good possible addition. Um, they are able to develop strategic thinking and communication skills while developing school pride and a sense of belonging. And this just goes for any type of athletic program that we offer here um, with students making sure that they're involved and they're able to you know, communicate with those that are also interested in their program. Uh, this is also done remotely on campus uh, throughout the state of Maine and nationwide uh, if it gets up to that level and if they do qualify, uh, because there are tournaments which was a mind blowing experience when I was going through uh, pictures and videos. Uh, CMCC, I believe held the tournament in fall of 22 or winter of 23 and it was incredible like seeing scouts going and watching kids and seeing them participate within any type of uh basically any program that they were currently doing at that time uh and there is actually play vs uh, has given over $700,000 in scholarships uh, to high school students across the country to continue their education. Uh, and I have also heard of students at Deer Ago after graduation that have participated within events for esports or have actually communicated with community colleges or universities within the New England area um, to see if they wanted to be also a part of their program. Uh, the uh, fall of 2022, I think that this is the last one that I have, uh, 22 schools uh, across the state of Maine with over 220 students uh, were involved. And I just see that number growing just because I see the potential of it with all the scholarships that are actually unused um, growing exponentially uh, across the country. And I was just bringing this information to you. I have not done anything at this time with esports. Uh, I believe that I can take the next step without increasing the budget whatsoever with the massive amount of grants uh, and opportunities that the MPA offers, as well as nation, like nationwide, that we can apply for. Okay, my quick question is, and yep. I don't know exactly when it was brought to us and the board voted it down because we have enough trouble keeping what we've got, as you saw with soccer, we sure. cut it, put back in. So our concern was, and we just added chess too, we're pretty tight. Yep. And we thought if we can maintain what we got. So my thought is, I don't know what the whole board needs, but I think it needs to go to the board before you say, oh, let's get the kids excited. Yeah. And because eventually it will have to go to the board. Agreed. Uh, to be approved, but also it's not going to stay a grant all the time. I, and this it, is just. It, a, don't, it doesn't. Right. We know that from every other program we, we've started and that's how we get. And we, we made the tough decision with uh, GMG to, to continue it, at least for next year. Yep. Because I don't see times being any better with money. And I think that this is just a projection. And I know that there is no evidence for this whatsoever. I see a grant opportunity for this program for five years. Uh, and I say that just because of the different types of programs that we have been able to obtain grants for uh, that the MPA has sanctioned, like Unified Basketball. And that grant, I'm just going to keep applying until they tell me to stop. Like, And there seems to be, with these new programs that are up and coming to get more athletes involved uh, or students across the board in all extracurricular activities, there is money there that is still unused that pretty much they're saying apply we'll see what you get 
and you might even get more than what they said that the limit might be just because there's still money that they have to give out for that grant purpose. Um, again, I know that that's just a projection and that there's no evidence to that. Uh, I will also say that within eSports, one of the largest, um, I would say one of the largest things that you have to actually budget for is transportation costs. And with eSports, everything is done on campus. So they will not be traveling for anything because they are able to participate in the program right from school as long as we are able to uh, have Wi-Fi at that time, which the only time that we wouldn't is if we were out of power. Any other questions for Nick? I know you're not done. You're, are you all done? No. That was all I had. Oh, any other questions for Nick? Comments? Go sure. for it. I bet if you put a sign-up sheet for that, it would blow you away how many people will sign up. And I, I mean, I'm old school. When my kids were growing up, there's going to be no games in our house. That's it but they'd always go to somebody else's house and play. But like, even in my industry, like what I do, I'm a farmer. The next phase, like we spray, we spray crops all the time. We grow a high, a potatoes, need a lot of management. And uh, we got some pretty nice machines, satellite. They count the rows for you. The boom turns on and off on the field that's not square. The next phase is you buy these drones. They're talking about buying three drones. They're only like 30,000 bucks a piece, which is cheap for farm equipment. You program them. You get three going at the same time. They spray the field. They link with each other. They come back. You All you do is load them, turn them back on. So this is the way that, I mean, this E stuff, like everybody here has to log in. They got to get a password. You all know what I'm talking about on that. And it's just the way of the future, I think. And I know it got voted down before when uh, his predecessor there tried to do it and and uh, I think I think we should at least explore it. Don't get their hopes up, but I think that's the way the world is going. There's going to be more people going to go esports than defensive line. I hate to say it because I was a defensive lineman, but uh, yeah, it's just the world. And another thing I saw the other day in Canton was a kid come home from the fifth grader come home from the camp. And he's standing there talking to a bunch of us at the Canton ball field. He was about shaking. He had to get home and play his game. So <laughs> sad but true. Yeah. Go ahead, Bruce. Well, my only comment is it's like, you know, again, I, I'm going with Carl. I mean, it's amazing nowadays with kids' computers. I mean, totally different from what we were grew up grew up with. But the thing is with nice with any program is that if we if we move forward with it. And the day comes that we can't support it. We can't afford every year you'd be re reissuing this like you do every sport. So it, it could be one of those things that, you know, like you say, it could be seeing grants for five years and five years from now, there's no money. We don't have the money. That's where it could end. So, I mean, I, I'm all for giving whatever's out there. I mean, let's face it. There's some kids that that's going to be the only thing they're going to do. So if it's available for them, hopefully it doesn't take kids away from the other things, but. It is what it is. Any other questions? Thank you, Nick. I have a question. Is this something that I should put on the next board meeting for a vote? Or would we like to do something under general consensus as the principal of the high school and superintendent of the district? I also feel like this would be a positive step forward for Darago High School. I think that there may be some overlap between the current athletic group of students, but I think this would also be that 45% that Nick was talking about across the country. I think we would have at least 45% more kids that would be interested in esports alone that are not participating currently in any extra or co-curricular activities at this time. And I would agree that if we went for a grant, then we could at least judge the interests of Darago High School students in this program. And as always, we're going to reassess programs when we do our budget to move forward. So I would want it to not impact the budget moving forward, but I, I do think it would be something that would be worthwhile to at least try on a pilot basis here with grants. Marianne. I'd like to know if the same rules are going to apply, if the grades need to be kept up attendance and all of that yes 
And it also is MPA sanctioned. So I have to abide to the MPA bylaws for esports as I would any other athletic program that is offered. Um, I'm trying to decide. Um, I think it would, well, that won't be till maybe the next board meeting. Uh, I can tell you right now, I'm like Carl and games are not, you know, my grandchildren, they haven't even seen them. They go to an arcade, they see something because we don't want them in front of a screen. We want them physically moving. And I actually have a nephew. He plays a lot of games. He don't come out of the basement. Yeah. And I'm talking, he's graduated. So I know this seems positive, but to me, we should be trying. I know they'll get him more maybe communicating. They already communicate. That's the way they communicate. To me, that doesn't help the physical. That doesn't help the interaction of person to person because you're looking at a screen. So I would agree with that, except for with it being more organized within a school, like the students that are going to opt for the esports. I would say, and again, this is just a projection, more than likely they are playing video games regardless. And there's only a certain number of programs that the MPA has sanctioned for them to use for competitions and tournaments and so on and so forth. Having them within a room at the high school with a possibility of being able to play together, at least they're not just connected via a headset. Like, I just see more opportunity with students being able to communicate and strategize with each other in the same room rather than just talking over a headset. So I think that there's positives and I understand where you are coming from regarding that. Um, I also think that the computer technology field is increasing. And even though they might not be playing a game when they go to college or when they graduate college, Technology is going to be a piece of it. And I think that this could be a stepping stone just for them to and have that opportunity. That technology, yes, technology is here in every element, not just needed for sport. Right. But we also found through the pandemic, how did they learn through that technology? Right. Not very well. Yeah. No. And that we do know. Yeah. And that's the evidence of that. There's no going back on that. You're, we're still seeing, we will see that for many years, the repercussions. That's all you see on the news, the mental health. Um, I just don't want to be put in the position as a board member, because when I say we're looking into it and the kids get excited, that makes me feel terrible as a person if we can't support that. Because we are very lucky as a small class C to offer what we do. Agreed. And we offer a lot. Yep. And that's what our goal is to get everybody, anybody involved. But I want to make sure that because to me, unified is important. Mm -hmm. And I'm glad the grants to there because that would be a discussion of, OK, if the grants end, what do we do? But like you say, there is an end and I'm still waiting for we got one more year of Esther money. I'm still waiting for the ball to drop. <laughs> and I mean, like I said, that's just a projection. It could be sooner. It could be later. I mean, there could be, there could be grant opportunity available for a decade, just like, I mean, unified basketball didn't just start with us applying for it this past year. It's been years and years and years. Uh, and I just feel as if this field is growing, uh, exponentially. So it, it could be longer than five years. Um, and I think that there's just support out there that we can get uh, to make sure that we can offer as much as we possibly can for students without having it be a huge impact to us, financially speaking. So what does the board want to do? A consensus or a vote at the next meeting to have him look into things? Um, <laughs> Yeah, number one, what would the vote be? No, we there's nothing budgeted. There would be no impact to the budget. Yeah, but that's a good question. Is that a question for me? It's a question. Then I'm going to pan that over to Pam. What? 
So I believe that it's already been explored. Mr. Carvis has done quite a bit of research behind it. So at this point, I think the board should be determining whether or not it's something that they want to move forward, have Mr. Carvis move forward with trying to secure funding for and creating an esports team for Darago High School. Larry? I think it'd be wise to at least go until the next meeting because there's been some in conversations about physical versus non-physical. And I just made a note to myself that it'd be a little bit of uh, research to find out is that actually affecting the student's ability with the non-physical with the computer interaction so i think it'd be it'd be better to table it till next meeting have a little bit of time for everybody to look into it and then take a vote which is not going to reflect anything to the budget but just a consensus vote okay what does everybody feel a couple of weeks i don't want to vote tonight okay <laughs> All right. That we'll sounds put good. It on the agenda for June twenty seventh. I'll see you on June twenty seventh. Okay. Um. And uh, is there any more data we need from him? It'd be nice to see a few, some kind of what's available or sure. Put something up. A little slideshow. Well, yeah. Slide yes, show. Yes, I can do what that. You got? Participation. Yeah. Just what you want to do when you first. There's got to be pros and cons to this. You know, yes. I mean, what are the pros? What Thank are the cons? You. Where sure. are the drawbacks? What's the benefit? When is it held all year? Blah, 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 blah. All right. Sounds good. Thank you, you. I just have one question. Do you yep. want state and national information or would state. you just state? Okay. Even though national i've seen it but but sure. at least what the what the mountain valley conference is it in the mountain valley conference or is it a statewide conference or how does it work sure thank you very much you're welcome you can go home now all right we don't have a student report actually i do she oh. emailed one because she couldn't come tonight and so this is from diana Graduation went well for everyone, and the students that went to Project Grad had fun. Underclassmen are wrapping up classes. Everyone is looking forward to summer. Softball and baseball are playing each other in a charity game on Thursday, June 15th at Sally Clark Field at 3 o'clock. Feel free to join them. Thank you, and have a great evening. Okay. Policy, we haven't done anything. Finance? All our uh, towns voted today on our budget. Hopefully, it'll passed no problems i uh, heard from people there was low voter turnout although when i walked down from the central office to here there was a steady stream going in there to dixfield okay um curriculum hasn't met buildings and grounds negotiations haven't met personnel natalie's not here ad hoc we heard board member comments bruce I'm going to start more of a question. Who maintains the softball field for the high school? We maintain it. Okay. Uh, I've got a few comments and concerns that it's been in pretty disarray. Do you know anything about whether things are being upkept more than just the lawns being mowed? To my knowledge, they've been upkept. Maybe Mr. Carvis can address that. Seems he goes down there frequently. It has issues, but it it's not because of upkeep. It's because it has issues. Do you have any specifics that you're referring to regarding that? So I would say that there are improvements that we would like to do on the dugouts specifically, uh, such as uh, doors on either side of the dugouts just so that we can make sure that it's maintained on the inside um, because there has been um, basically demeaning of the dugouts at times. Uh, I think that that's been the case for however long it's been around because uh, I do not know when it was originally built. It's not that long, God. 2017? Was maybe. it before COVID? It might be. It's not yeah. I think it was like even like 18 or 19 when they started there. Yeah. Okay. D did you ever see the other one though? Marble. You ever been down to Marble Park? I have not that walked in that dugout. Scary. You, you talk about this is the queen compared to Marble. And I think that 
there's definitely improvements that can be made. And I think that the reason why we don't necessarily have as many issues with the baseball dugouts is because it's literally right across from the school. So it feels more uh, like direct eye contact, I guess you could say. Uh, softball field, since it's down the road a little bit, I think that, that that's why it's more visited. That's what I'll say. Uh, but I definitely have had conversations with Kenny uh, and the softball coaches and even the softball team about putting some barn style doors on uh, so that during the game, like the top portion could be open so that they could be seen while making sure that they're kept in and it can be locked up. Could be something that we would want to address to Kenny to put on something that he could possibly Absolutely. renovate or do whatever he needs to do this summer. Yep. I mean, he always has a summer list of things and we've got a good staff that does a lot of Yes. really nice quality work. And I think it could be something that would benefit the area. Yes. And we have had multiple conversations and it's on my summer to-do list for both himself and I. <laughs> Cause I also know the, the field, the outfield has a lot of bumps, holes, but it was flooded when we had that, you know, back in the back. But I just think it needs to be looked at and to see what we can do you know, it is better than marble, but it, you know, it needs some tender loving care. And as far as I'm concerned, Irving's has given permission for us to, like, if we need to take down the fence and kind of push back a little bit, just so that we can make sure that the field oh, is more level, the, the Irving's, Irving's owns right, right. after the right. fence. Uh, and we do have their permission, uh, I believe. I'm not going to go on the record and say that for sure, but I have heard that we have their permission. Obviously, we would want to double check on that just so that we could take off the fence and possibly like push out just a little bit further uh, just to make sure that we can level it out correctly instead of going like right up to the fence. And Scott Blaisdell is looking into, because he's a master electrician, they use a generator to run the scoreboard. There is electricity that's not very far from there. So if we could get a quote, maybe to how much to get to it. And then he would put it in. He helped with the lights. Um, he's qualified, but there is some things that really need to be done to it. Yep. Carl? I was going to suggest, yeah, lights. And I, I'm sure the Oxford County Sheriff would be more than happy to drive in there once in a while at night mm -hmm. if you asked them. Go ahead and turn around. Pretty easy. I've, I've asked them to stop by there quite a few times and right. just park there just for their afternoon reporting. And they have definitely done so. Um, and I really appreciate their efforts with that because it definitely has deterred people away. Thank you, Nick. Liz, you had a board member comment. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Um, question. Back in April, I talked with Pam for about five minutes one morning about looking into maybe a um, some kind of a rating system for our library uh, materials. And I'm not sure if we never, I mean, I haven't got back with you on that. And if you found anything out that maybe we could look into something that like that, or the board might be interested in looking into it when it comes from specifically material that's and I'm going to read what I'm going to say. Um, material, the descriptions of sexual acts and visual depictions of nudity that are available to high school students and middle school students, implied nudity, um, and things along that nature, and also violence, not just this either. And I didn't know if that was something next year, starting next school year, that we might want to look into. And I do know that another school has already done that in the state just this last week uh, because of the, the problem that this whole explosion uh, across the state has caused and division between people and, and my opinion of what is good and somebody else's opinion is what is good are not going to be the same. But I think there could be maybe a rating system like you have with movies, underage, certain age groups. Is that something that we can pursue? We've never discussed it. Um, just a clarification. We do have sex ed. Are you talking about the no, curriculum I'm just, books? I'm just talking about whatever's in the library that my child or grandchild or whoever uh, 
can go read or take out um, and that say, for example, I don't approve that <laughs> I, I would want to know about it. Um, so right. else might somebody else might say that's OK. I don't mind my child reading that particular book because we already do have in policy if there is um some issue with a book they have a procedure right do. i do i know that and I, that is for parents too right i don't know if this is anything i don't even know number one is this micromanaging is it because we do have policies um who is determining um, this rating system, right? Um, because just, those are all good questions, and they're because, ones that I would be interested um, in finding out. That's not my realm, right? Not uh, mine either. No, it, and I don't know if the board is even interested. That's what I'm. So asking. we yeah. can um, have a discussion maybe at the next board meeting to see if the board has any interest, correct, in doing this, because. I wouldn't even know how to do it because, well, you Bob, know, like that, we that's, say, that's not, that's not our job. Our job, our job is picking books and that right. we delegate that. And that's why we have um, policies in place, but we would need to hear from the board. But that's what I'm saying. I, I don't know. I'm asking the question. Yeah. I'm just putting it out there for dialogue for yes or no, okay, maybe we could look into it. Um, it's not possible. That's an answer also. Uh, or, or we don't want to be involved in something like that, but I'm just thinking of, you know, what has hit the newspapers and I wouldn't want it to hit here. Um, proactive is what I would rather be than reactive. With our, you know, So I'm just asking if that's yeah. anything that anybody wants to look into or talk about or discuss and it could be no and that's okay yep. because majority rules and that's what we that's go what by the board is that's right yep. all right any other board member comments my only comment is i did go to the graduation i sat in the back because i had a friend at candlelight they were wonderful the kids are wonderful uh the staff was wonderful nick the music director was wonderful um, it was really nice. It's nice. The kids were very excited to graduate. I mean, I've never had that last graduate. The boy in his little scooter <laughs> was awesome. Uh, so it was really good. And the kids, they're going to be missed. But um, we even had a great banquet last night. Only one senior wasn't there. So that's pretty hard after. So any other board member comments? Uh, oh, sorry, Carl. Oh, just a real quick one on like ad hoc civil rights. I still feel that this district is way above the norm of probably the whole country on being respectful to other people for who they are, not what they are. Just still think that we're doing a great job there. You're not going to get, a, you're not going to have 100% compliance anyway. Yeah. Thank you, Carl. Say no more. Um, and I have a motion to adjourn. And a second. Roll call. Larry. Yep. Bruce. Yes. Tim. Yes. Deanna. Yes. Barb. Yep. Liz. Yes. Carl. Yes. Marianne. Yes.